Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Akash Bhardwaj. I work as a Microsoft 365 developer with uh, expertise in developing custom solutions using SharePoint Framework, Power Platform, and Microsoft Azure. So after this session, if you would like to connect with me, you can reach out to me using any of these channels. And uh, today I'll be showcasing a sample SPFX web part that I contributed a while back to the PNP repository. So it's an Outlook add-in built using SPFX that allows you to save any attachments to a OneDrive folder or subfolder. So some of the features for this web part is, uh, first of all, I would like to actually share that I actually got the inspiration to create this from another sample in the repository that was submitted by Marcus Muller, I guess. So what that web part used to do, so that used to actually copy your email from, uh, from your, I mean, it used to copy your email to any Teams or OneDrive folder. So I just extended it a bit to, uh, to allow the users to copy email attachments uh, instead of the emails. So what you can do is, so you can select any there that uh, is present in your OneDrive. And uh, then you can select any attachments, like either all attachments, or you can select a few attachments that are present in an email. And then you can just save your attachments uh, right from within the Outlook web app. So this has been built using the preview feature of SPFX that allows you to create the Outlook add-ins. And uh, in the hood, all, the, all these operations to uh, get the OneDrive folders and uh, get the email attachment content and then copy, I mean, save that, uh, save that attachment to the OneDrive folder. So all these operations have been done using Microsoft Graph. So if you want to use this uh, sample in your, uh, in your tenants, so this would require permission for the mail.read and the files.read write on Microsoft Graph because the mail.read permission actually allows you to read the, uh, uh, read the attachment content and then the files.read write uh, permissions allow you to uh, read to fetch all the folders present in the OneDrive and then and then save that email attachment to, uh, file to that uh, particular OneDrive folder. So this is how the web part looks like. And uh, now let me show let me show this how it works. Too. So this is one of the emails that uh, I have. So this email has a couple of attachments. So if I just click over here, more actions. So I see this save attachments option is available to me. So this is actually the web part that I have built in. So when I open this, so first of all, it allows me to select the folder. So these are all the folders that are present in my OneDrive. So I can select any of these, or I can also move back and forth between a parent folder and a child folder. So let's say I select this one for M365 Developer Bootcamp and then Gurgaon. And now I can select any of these email attachments. So either I can see, I can select all of them or a couple of them and then the save button would, would get enabled for me. So for now, let me select these two attachments and then click on save. So once it says uploading, so and after it has completed successfully, so you will get this uh, small message that the attachments have been saved. So now if I move over to my OneDrive, so this was the folder that I selected and inside this. So here you can see this has modified a few seconds ago. So uh, this was one of the images that I had copied for the PNP Parker. So that's how the web part works. So that's about it for most of the web part functionality. It's, it's a simple web part that just allows you to select a folder and save your attachments to that folder. Now let me jump over to the code. So this is my web part file. So in the render method, first of all, I'm checking whether this web part is getting executed in the Outlook web app. So I do that using this dot context dot SDKs dot office. So if it is uh, if it is being executed within the context of Outlook, so then I get the item. So that's uh, that is the email that I have selected, and then I get that item ID in the REST uh, REST API format. And after that, I just uh, create this object of 
project that I created it. So like I said, so this was actually inspired by that other sample. So most of the typings or the service methods that uh, you find in this web part, so those would be actually quite similar to the one that we already have. So here I just construct this object that uh, just contains the item ID, that's uh, the unique ID of the email, as well as a list of all the attachments that we have selected. And if no, if it is not being executed within the office context, so then I am just populating this with some sample data because uh, while I was developing, I I needed to actually check the UI, I needed to see how my web part is behaving, how does it look like. So for that, I used to use the SharePoint Workbench itself, and uh, at that time, this was helpful. That instead of actually getting an email attachment, I had some sample data, and I was using that to. Uh, check the UI of my web part. So once I've constructed this object, so then I have this save attachments React component, and I'm just passing the this mail object uh, along with the description and the graph helper object. So this graph helper object that you see, so I am initiating this, uh, initializing this within the on init method. So I have a separate class called the graph helper. So I'll also go over to this uh, in a couple of seconds. So this is the class that actually deals with all these operations related to the either getting the OneDrive folders or the email attachment or doing that. So basically everything where we are using the graph API, so those are handled here. So if I go to my React component, so here I have used uh, React hooks. So I have created a couple of these uh, uh, variables that I'm using to store and update the state values. So inside the render method, so this is pretty much it about the UI. So nothing special here. I'm just using a couple of fluent UI controls. And uh, the most important methods I would say in this component are these two. So first one is the update attachments. So this method I'm, this method is being called whenever that checkbox is updated to uh, select uh, any of the attachments. So at that time I have this variable in which I am uh, actually pushing all these items that those have been selected, or just deleting them once uh, that once any checkbox is unchecked. So this method would be called whenever that checkbox is updated. And uh, then when the save button is clicked, so at that time, this copy to OneDrive method would be called. So this would first of all update this loading state so that uh, we see that message is, we see that message that says uploading right now. And uh, after that, uh, here we are actually get calling this get attachment content method. So this belongs to this graph helper. So I'll go over to this uh, in a moment. So this actually gets the, uh, content of that email attachment. I mean, the content of each of the email attachments that we have selected. And once it has that content, it then checks whether it's a large file or it's a normal file. So this I'm doing because for saving large attachments, there is a separate uh, process in the graph API. If, uh, if you if you are actually saving a file that's greater than 4 MB. So I have a separate method for that called save large attachment. And if it's a small file, then we just call this save attachment. And then lastly, we just update this status, whether if it has uh, um, completed successfully, so then we just give this success message. Otherwise, we just uh, show this that some error has occurred. So that's it for this method. So, so now let me go over to the graph helper class. So this is the class that contains all these methods like you can see for getting the OneDrive folders. So this would give you all the root folders that are present in your OneDrive. And uh, then we have the subfolder as well. So if you have selected any folder and it has, it contains multiple subfolders. So it allows you to get a, a list of all those subfolder that uh, the current folder has as childs. And uh, apart from this, this was the method for get attachment contents. So here we just uh, specify the message ID as well as the attachment ID. So all these are graph API methods. And uh, so this was the save attachment. So like I said, so if the file size is smaller than 4 MB, so 
So then this operation is pretty much straightforward. We just call this method and it executes this REST API call to save that attachment content into your selected folder. It's a large file, so then we have to do some extra effort in this case. So what we do for this is, first of all, we need to create an upload session because if the file size is large, then it, if you don't create this upload session, then it might show you a, a timeout error that the file size is large. So for that, I first call this create upload session method here. And then I actually break, uh, break down the content into smaller chunks and then up, uh, upload those as individual slices. So you can see, I mean, I'm not, I won't go into the details of all this, but uh, this is how actually we uh, enable saving the large files into this, uh, into any OneDrive folder. So this is pretty much it, uh, I guess. And uh, once again, like I said, so you would need to provide some permissions for this. So here you can see the permissions that I specified was the mail.read and files.read, right? So this, these can be found in the package solution.json. And uh, here we have those uh, types that I talked about, this iMail and iFolder. And uh, I guess that's it for myself. Over to you, Vesa. Excellent stuff, Akash. Really, really cool. Um, one thing, just a really, really clean implementation and, and a nice graph helper uh, for sure uh, for people to use as a reference. So really, really cool stuff. Uh, like you, Akash said, just to re reiterate on that one, the Office add-in option for SPFX is unfortunately still in preview. Um, and this is not because we wouldn't want to provide this in GA. Uh, it's just a matter of prioritization in the Office add-in side of the world. So unfortunately, we were still waiting for Office add-in people and Office client people to actually uh, implement the full support on this one. Uh, so if you want to provide them feedback, provide them feedback if you would like to have this kind of a support for SPFX as well, because um, I, the, our idea from a day one has been that the same piece of code can actually work in a Microsoft Teams tab or as a SPFX web part or as a single page application or as a Office add-in. Um, as well but it is what it is for now uh well we are still waiting for the final decisions on the office uh and outlook side on this one but i think that's it thank you akash really really cool stuff really clean thank implementation you. and a lot of good feedback on the on the chat window as well mm -hmm.